students, in this video, I'm going to introduce you to some code regarding football betting odds. So to start with, I want to just give a shout out to the original source of this data set, which is this Kaggle competition called the European Soccer Database. And uh, it's a, a database in SQLite, SQLite. Uh, which contains a whole host of different variables. There's 313 megabytes in total, and um, I've done some work to make this more accessible to economists and closer to the stuff that we're used to working with. So in this folder, I have the raw database in SQLite, and this script here, Materialize, is what generates the data sets that we'll be working on. So if you want to expand and extract additional variables above and beyond what I've chosen to do, this is where you have to do it. And so here's what a football data set looks like. As you can see, there's a number of different seasons going all the way up to 2015-16 season and back to the 28-29 season. Um, so for instance, the first row here we can see was uh, in the Belgium Jubilee League between KRC Jenk and Beershot AC. And so out here next to that row are different bidding odds. So this is from B365, that's bet365. And you can see that their odd on, odds on the home team was 1.73. Odds on a draw, 3.4, and odds on the away team winning was 5.0. And in this particular row, this is for KRC Jenk, um, and the home dummy is equal to true, so KRC was the home team. So you didn't get that great odds on the home team. If you bet 100 kroner, you would have gotten 173 back. So in other words, Bet365 probably thought that it was more likely that the home team, KRC, was going to win rather than beer shot. So let's um, load up the data set and get into it here. I'm just going to reset my kernel and let's clear all of the um, output. Here we go. All right. So first off, um, after we've convinced pandas to read in the data, this is what it looks like in, uh, in pandas format. Um, here you can see all the different variables I talked about. And, <clears throat> um, and here's one row example that was what we were looking at before. And I'm just printing the columns given by this list calls here that I'm creating in a kind of lazy way. First, this these few variables and then a list comprehension here for each outcome away draw home give me a list that contains b365 with that outcome appended it's just a lazy way of doing it quickly so here are the odds all right so the whole goal of this first notebook is to explain to you how to work from the odds over to the implied probabilities and this is the formula that we'll use, that 1 over the odds of away divided by the sum of all of the inverse odds, that's the implied probability. Let's just think a little bit about what that means. Here are the odds for the game that was, uh, or for one fictitious game. Are these actually the ones? No. For a fictitious game. So, <clears throat> if we just... If we say that um, the odds are 1.75, um, then what that means is that if we bet 100 kroner, we get 175 kroner back. So if the probability of winning is equal to 57.1%, then that means that, um, that we're kind of indifferent. Then with probability 57.1%, we get 75 kroner back and with probability uh, with the remaining probability we lose the amount so in expectation we get 100 kroner so so that's kind of the neutral baseline uh, probability so if we compute the implied 
we can call that implied probabilities by the odds. And if we compute the implied probabilities or the reciprocal values uh, for all of these odds, this is what we get. 57.1, 29.9, and 23.8. And what we can note is that when we sum those up, we have more than 100%. This is what's called over the bookmarkers over round. So the bookie is adding something on top of the neutral probabilities. And that's what ensures that the bookmaker is going to make a profit. And so in order to, so this means that we can't just use these as the bookmaker's uh, probabilities or expected probabilities for each of the outcomes because they sum to more than 100%. So they can't be probabilities. So how do we get towards probabilities from this? Well, we're going to have to make an assumption of how how the bookie is distributing this over round these extra 10.8%, that's too much. And um, the simplest thing we can do is just to assume that the behavior of the bookie is that she observes some probabilities and then decides on an over round, here it's 10.8% extra, and then she just adds it on top of all of the original probabilities. Because if she does that, so proportional, so she multiplies each of her original probabilities by 1.108. If she does that, then we can undo this over rounding by simply dividing again by 110.8%. And then that's going to give us back, um, get us back to neutral probabilities, or rather to probabilities that sum to 100%. So that's what we're going to assume. <clears throat> Although, of course, you can ask yourself interesting questions about whether this is actually how bookmakers um, assign this extra over round, whether they do it uniformly or proportionally to all of the probabilities. But let's do that for now. All right. Then um, let's see how this works with the data set. Here, what we're, I'm doing is I'm just creating some lists of variables that would be useful because, as you could see, that the, the original data structure has quite a lot of um, variables, so 44. So in order to uh, work with it more quickly, we have this common list of variables that are unrelated to bidding. These are the first ones that will be common between the original data frame and the new one that we'll create. And then we have the um, all of the remaining bidding variables. And so we're going to create a new data frame that copies the original one, and then we're going to uh, create these um, sums of raw probabilities. Let's actually, yeah, well, that's what they are, but we're going to call them something else in a second. All right, so I've also created uh, this dictionary firm vars where I can take the name of one of the firms, for example, BW um, or Bit365, and then I get the variables for that firm. So if I go that of this, I get the, the bidding variables for B365. And so what we're going to do here is we're going to loop through all of the bidding firms and we're going to construct first the inverses of the, um, and let's just look at a few of them to make it less confusing. We're first going to, con um, first we go from the bids, then we divide, or the odds, then we divide, we say 1.0 divide by those odds. Those are the kind of the raw probabilities, if you will, but they don't sum to one. So if we sum over the first axis, we can see that, um, oops, over the zeroth axis, sorry. This isn't doing a whole lot of good. If we sum these numbers up, what we can see is that they're uh, above one. Ah, now I know what's wrong. Here, we have to take the whole thing and sum uh, over axis equals one. And now we can see that this is the over round. So we can call this the over round for the uh, matches zero, one, and two here. And by the way, if we want to see what the names were of the, for instance, let's see what the teams were for these three matches. Here they are. So as we can see that from match zero, 
uh, the overion was 1.07 percent um, and for this uh, match one here uh, the round was one point uh, so 10 percent 10.3 percent extra and so on so this is the over round so what we're going to do is we're going to take our um, our inverse probabilities here let's, uh, or inverse odds these were the inverse odds and then we're simply just going to say let's take the inverse odds and divide by the over round oops that didn't work very well the inverse odds and then um, here we go. So <clears throat> for the first row, each of the numbers should be divided by 1.07. So 57 divided by 1.07, that's 53.16. Okay, maybe so maybe I did some rounding off here, but that's 53.9 here. Um, and so it's dividing all of those numbers by the over round so that now if these are our actual probabilities here, or our, what we think the bookmaker probabilities are, then if we sum over the first axis, okay, it didn't work entirely, did it now? All right, let's do this once again. Um, okay, so let's do it just for one row then. Okay, so now we have just one row and our inverse odds are just the rows for that first one. The problem is that uh, the dividing here um, We're getting in trouble with. There we go. The problem is that we're trying to divide by a uh, a series, um, and uh, so pandas interprets that in a very specific way. Okay. And what happens if we sum these up over the first axis? Now we get that they sum over uh, sums of one hundred percent. So this is the zeroth axis, and this is the first axis going across. All right, <clears throat> so this is essentially what the code below here is going to do. It's going to loop over all of the betting firms and then it constructs what we could call, probably should call the inverse odds here. Inverse odds, and we're going to use that again and again and again. Inverse odds. And the inverse odds are just one over the um, the uh, the odd bookmaker odds for this particular firm. We're looping through all of the bidding firms, and remember that the bidding firms are bid 365, BS, BW, GW, GB, and so on. All right. Then we take the sum over the first axis, and we're skipping missings here, so that we return a missing if all of the numbers are missing, and uh, the way to think about the sum of raw probabilities, if you will, if you think of the inverse odds, it's the sum of the inverse odds is that this is actually what we referred to as the over round before. But it's just the sum of the raw inverse odds, of raw probabilities, if you will, even though these inverse odds are not probabilities because they don't, don't sum to 100%. All right, so let's try and run this. All right, so now we have D and uh, we can see that if we take, for instance, now we've created these variables, bit 365 um, for win, for draw, and for loss. And they're missing for some of the games because there weren't odds available for all games in the data set. And we can also see what the uh, 
b365 over round was here we go so that also varies across the games perfect right <clears throat> so let's just have a quick look at what um what the predicted probabilities look like so first we're going to create um, an outcome variable that takes the value loss if the goal difference is negative it is d for draw if it's zero and w for win if the goal difference is zero and um, let's just have a quick look this is the um, the distribution of the goal differences and we can see that we can also ask i believe we can ask for a discrete one can't we maybe we can't we can ask for more bins so you can see that it is actually a discrete uh, distribution or um, I'm misspelling here there we go so zero a goal difference of zero was the most uh, common thing if this is a little hard to read we can do a bar chart so the most common thing is zero goal difference and then plus or minus one is equally common and that's of course going to be the case because our data set has one row or two rows for every game, one for the winning team and one for the losing team naturally, or one for the home team and one for the away team. So we're always gonna have uh, identical amounts. Great. Okay, then what we can do here is we can grab some of the rows. We could also just take all of them um, but here what we're doing is we're taking the parts of the data frame where we're looking at the, the the matches that were played at the home, at a home um, uh, arena. We're grouping all of those in groups of the outcome variable, so they're going to be L, D, and W. And we're taking the variable bet365 probability of winning and computing the average. And then I'm just converting it to a frame. Uh, and giving it the name bet365 probability of winning and what we can see is that on average among the games where the uh, home team did in fact win bet365 was assigning a probability of winning of 52.1 percent and if we take all of the ones where the uh, the home team <coughs> uh, lost bet365 was on average assigning a probability of 35.5% of that loss. Um, but of course, that's just the average, and there's quite a lot of dispersion around that average. So if we look at, for all of the data set, for all the, um, ma the matches where Bet365 um, did assign odds, we, and we can compute the implied probability of winning, Here's what it looks like. So the green ones over here are the ones where the match was in fact won. And it looks like those are shifted strictly to the right. So higher assigned probabilities for the matches where they did in fact win. Whereas the, the matches where it was a draw, Bet365 tended to assign lower probabilities. But of course, I mean, there are some cases where Bet365 had set odds that implied that they expected a win rate, a probability of winning of over 80%. And uh, then the match turned out to be a draw. But of course, that's sometimes going to be the case. <clears throat> and here you can see the, the corresponding, if we take from the dat frame, uh, recall that in, in D, we had the probabilities and dat, the original data that we read in, we had odds. So if we look at what the average odds were in those cases we can see that they were 2.08 for the winner on average and 2.54 for the loser on average in all matches played at home turf and so what's pretty interesting is that if we compute the inverse or average odds compute the over round and divide those inverse odds by the over round then what we're going to get out is probabilities here, so 41.9%. Um, and for instance here, so on average, 
B365 had an uh, overround of 114.9%. So these probabilities don't give the same numbers as what we got up here. And that's of course because the average of a nonlinear function is not the same as the nonlinear function of the average. And computing the odds is a nonlinear function of the odds themselves. As you can see, 1 over OA is already a nonlinear function, and then we're dividing by even further nonlinearities. Um, so that's all I wanted to say on going, going from odds to probabilities uh, with booking data. Or bidding data, I should say.